Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Oh, this mic is loud. So, you know, I love that song. Jesus, what a beautiful name. How many of y'all find that name beautiful? Yes. Do y'all sing praise? Amen. Is that the thanksgiving of our lips to God? Yeah. Is it? So if we all understand that that's the thanksgiving of our lips to God, wouldn't we want to sing just a little bit harder and a little bit louder? Yes. <laughs> I barely heard voices in here singing. It's almost Christmas time. You know what that means. Real commercialized, right? Yes. Everybody's running to and fro, buying their gifts, thinking about what they can do for one another, what gifts they're going to get each other. Has anybody thought on Christ? Yes. Have we thought about what gifts we might give God? Have we thought about that? As a matter of fact, I'm going to go a little further. Let's, let's talk about what Christmas is supposed to be about. Is that okay? Yes. That's not my today's sermon, but I just... It's, it's a good way to introduce you into today, today's sermon. Let's, let's talk about what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a time to gather and give praise to God for what? What is the greatest gift ever given in this entire world? Jesus. His eternal life through His only begotten Son. That is the greatest gift ever given. And God gave it, and we, we as a people come together once a year, supposedly, to celebrate this time and give thanks to who? To God. To God. But instead, everyone's more worried about what they're getting and what they're giving to family members, to children. To, it's just become real commercialized. But, but my thing is this. And unto you a child shall be born. And his name shall be what? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Uh, and another verse says Jesus. Jesus in English means Savior. That's the whole thing right there. Jesus means our Savior. As a matter of fact, I'll go further and tell you Jesus means God saves his people. Amen. Present tense. God saves because it's a transliteration from Yeshua. Or Joshua, Jesus. So it's a transliteration of those names. And Jesus in our English language means Savior. So his name shall be Savior. But I like Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. And how is God with us? Through Jesus. So today's scripture reading came from Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4. Right? Right? Yes. Who hath ascended up into the heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? Listen to this question that the, the, the wisest man, one of the smartest men that ever lived. Listen to his question here. What is his? That's King Solomon. That's right. You I know where you were going with that. So, what is what is this, his question? What is his name? What is his name? What and is what his is son's his name? How many beings? Son's here? name. Two. Who said who? God. Father. Now, I'm going to ask you, when's the last time you thought on the Father's name? When is the last time we thought on the Son's name? outside the church. When we all stand before that mighty angel in heaven and he holds those scales up, what is he weighing? You know what he's weighing? Our thoughts. And he's going to look to see, oh, what a solemn moment that's going to be. Where are our thoughts going to lean? Is it going to lean more worldly or more heavenly? Is it going to... See, these are the questions we need to be asking ourselves. What does it mean to me to think on the Father's name? I'm going to tell you this. It might mean the difference between having your name written in the book of life or not written in the book of life. 
Now that's a thought, isn't it? So what is his name? What is his son's name? And we thought on it. Do we understand their names? Do we understand the significance in the Bible? Do y'all know in our Bible, seven times the word Jehovah is still there? Seven times. I can give you the scriptures if you like. But we don't have time to cover every detail today. Seven times the name Jehovah, Yahuwah. yod heh wah -Hey. I'm going to even go further right now so I don't have to go into the scriptures. But there's a passage in the Bible that says, My name shall be in Judah. Y'all remember? I'll point it out later. All right? And the Father's name in the Bible, the Tetragrammaton, is four consonants. Four letters. yod -Hey. In the Hebrew, it reads right to left. It's yod -Hey wah -Hey. yod -Hey wah -Hey. People say, well, we really don't know how to pronounce that. Do you know how to pronounce Yehuda? Because let me spell Yehuda for you. yod -Hey Dalit wah -Hey. The Father's name is yod -Hey wah -Hey, And Judah is yod -Hey Dalit wah -Hey, And they pronounce it Yehuda. Oh, this is getting good already. So how would I pronounce the Father's name? There was no J's in Hebrew. And we still almost have it exactly right today. Jehovah, Yahuwah. Do y'all know in our Bibles they hid the, the Father's name with capital letters, all capital L-O-R-D? Every time you see that, it is, in fact, the Hebrew number 3068. And it is Yod-Heh-Wah-Heh. Yahuwah. How many times do I find our Father's name in our Bible? Over 6,500 times. The Father's name is there. This is going to get real good today because in the Old Testament, there was on the miter, the fair miter of the high priest, which was all solid white, a gold plate that was over the top of blue lace and engraved upon that gold plate was holiness under yod hey wah -Hey. Where is the Father's name written? In that high priest's what? Forehead. Forehead. So I had the blue lace, which represent the commandments of God. Remember the Israelites were commanded to sew blue lace to the border of their garments, that it be in constant remembrance of God's holy Day. commandments. Yeah. Blue lace. And then King Solomon writes again, I, God, desire. I desire, because God was speaking through his prophet, I desire true in the inward parts rather than choice gold. So here we have the commandment keeping people of God with the testimony, who is the truth, I'm sorry, I can't hear you, church. Who is the truth? Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's a sandwich. Right in the middle, you find truth. Uh, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Jesus says, I came to testify the truth. Is he the truth? Is he the spirit of truth? Is he the word of God? Yes. There is no guile in him, right? No deception, no guile, no lies, none of that. None of it. So he is the truth. So I desire truth in the inward parts. In the, Old, in the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, and chapter 14, verse 17, you're going to find the two characteristics of God's true church. They are a commandment keeping people who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Where is the seal of God found? Forehead. Only in one place, and that is the? Forehead. So if I go back to the Old Testament, by the way, who is our high priest? Jesus. Is he the head of the church? Yes. Are we the body? Yes. So if the head is sealed, the whole body is sealed. Yes. Right? Yes. So if we are in Christ, are we going to have the same seal in our forehead? Yes. Following after Him, settled and grounded and rooted in the truth to the point that we can't be shaken or moved. That's the seal of God. That is the seal. So if I have this blue lace, commandment keeping people, gold plate, truth, testimony of Jesus Christ, faith of Jesus Christ, life of Jesus Christ in me, is it going to be stamped? Yes. Who stamps it? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And to us there is but one Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's a deep subject. And He is who seals you. Truth in the inward parts. And that truth is holiness. See, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now didn't Jesus say that? Yes. Yes, He did. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Seek righteousness unto holiness. And what's stamped on that golden plate is an engraving thereof as a signet. That's word for word, straight out of the Old Testament. 
Holiness unto Yehovah. Yod he wah he. That's what's stamped on that gold plate. On the fair mitre of the high priest. Holiness unto Yod he wah he. Have we thought on the Father's name? How important is it for me to study this out? Where is the mark of the beast found? Forehead and hands. Forehead and hands. Can God still be in your hands? No. Why not? Cannot say by works. We can't work our way into heaven. We're not saved by works. We're saved through through faith by grace. unmerited love. I love the word grace, but everybody's gotten so used to hearing the word grace, they forget what it means. Unmerited love. That's the meaning of grace. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. It was a free gift given to us. You with me on this? And not even started today's sermon yet. So, but this is important. Whose name was in the forehead? Was it Jesus or was it his father's? Father's. It's God's name in our foreheads. And we're not presentable before God without? The Son. You know, the Old Testament tells me that Jesus had the Father's name. His name was in him. As a matter of fact, I'll go further and tell you that God said, when I sent him before you to lead you to the promised land, that's not word for word, paraphrasing. He says, in the Old Testament, because Jesus had not yet descended and became our Savior, literally, but they looked forward to what was to come. He says, don't sin against him. For my name is in him. There's only one being in all the universe that has his name, the Father's name. And who is that? And that's how we can say Emmanuel. God with us. Because Jesus was equal with his Father. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 1, God exalted his Son and made him to be equal with himself. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 1, God says, God, even thy God. Even thy God anointed thee. So was God the Father calling his son God? Yes. Yes, he was. In Philippians chapter 2, we see the dissension of Christ from heaven. And he thought it not robbery to be made equal with his own father. You know why? They are one in nature, in purpose, and in character. But they are two distinct and separate personalities. Two different beings. So how can I have, how can we say that we have only one Holy Spirit? Because that's the Spirit that's within us. Father and the Son Spirit. Some people say, oh, they're not Siamese twins. They're not joined together. They misunderstand what the Spirit is. Jesus tells us these words I speak are Spirit. Is that the Spirit of truth? Yes. And if those words are in you, are you grounded and settled in the truth to the point that you can't be moved or shaken? Yes. Yes. That's the seal of God. Right there. Whose spirit dwells in us in Matthew and John chapter 6, verse 62 or 64, it tells us, these words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And it was right behind Jesus saying, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there's no life in you. How important is it for us to be thinking on these? I'm going to tell you this. If you're not thinking on it, you could be deceived. If you're not thinking on it, you could receive the wrong. We're going to cover some of this today. We could receive the wrong thing here. How important is it for us to have this truth? Are we studying it out? I'm going to say something. I'm going to say a little phrase. Okay, y'all ready for this? When I started, I want y'all to finish it. I want to see how many people know this. Okay, y'all ready for this? No, Maybe. not everybody. <laughs> all right. Some people just don't like to sing. <laughs> but that's all right. Try anyway. Try it. Because I know that you know the words. <coughs> Y'all ready? Yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. That's a pitiful praise ye the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Y'all know y'all just sung the oldest known word.
word in not just America's language, the whole world. You don't know every language in the whole world still says the same word in the Hebrew as it was way back then. Hallelujah. That's the oldest known word, one of the oldest known words in the whole world. And guess what it means? Y'all just sung. The Lord. <laughs> it means praise Yah. Hallelujah. Praise in the Hebrew. Look it up. Yah is short for Yahuwah. God. Praise God. Did God reserve His name in that word? Hallelujah. Yah? Yeah. Praise God. In the Hebrew. As a matter of fact, Elijah's very name. We're going to make a part two. I see this coming already because I haven't even begun the sermon yet. This is a sermon in itself. This is a sermon in itself. Elijah, when he came up on Mount Carmel and he faced off with all the Baal worshippers. What's that word Baal mean in the Bible? Lord. No gods. No gods. It means Lord. Lord worshippers. Lord worshippers. They worshipped what they didn't know. They really didn't know who their no God was. And I say no God because it was no God at all. But Elijah, uh, let, me say, let me tell you this. Elijah's very name Eli Yahu in the Hebrew. Eli means God. Yahu, Yahuwah, the Father's name. You know what his name means? Eli Yahu. You can look it up in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. You know, I never heard of it, uh, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance until Sister Dottie called me one day and says, Have you ever heard of this? I said, No, where's that at? She said, You need to get one. That was in 2007. Uh, and she remembers the story because a year earlier I was trying to find a name. Eli Akum. The God who raises us. Eli, God, Akum, who raises. Who will raise. Who will bring you up. Or stand you up. Eli Yahu is Elijah's name. Eli Yahu means my God is Yahuwah. Did he have to proclaim the Father's name? He, his own name proclaimed the Father's name. Eliyahu. And when he faced off with those Lord worshipers, Lord worshipers, he says, choose you this day. How long will you falter between two opinions? Choose you this day whom it is you worship. If my God be the one true God, if my God be the what? One true God. Well, in John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus says there's only one true God. And guess who he says the one true God is? Father. His Father. Did, uh, some of y'all, all y'all familiar with that? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you all familiar? If you turn in your Bibles, not right now, but you can, jot it down. John 17, verse 3. For this is eternal life. I'm going to quote it for you. That they, and Jesus is praying in front of his disciples. For this is eternal life. That they might know thee. The only true God. In Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. That was his words. How many true gods are there? One. And who is it? The Father. The Father. Does he have a beginning? No. He is Haya. Oh yeah. Yo, I know y'all say well, Haya. Yeah, I don't mean karate. Okay? <laughs> this isn't correct. Haya means the self-existent one. The I am that I am. We're going to cover all this next week. Because I'm not going to have time to cover everything today. But I have to introduce you to it. And to the Father's name. You know you can take those four consonants of the Father's name. Yod, Heh, Wah, he, And you can build all three things. He who was, who is, and is to come. Out of those four consonants. Yi ye, ho ye, and hi ya. Write them down if you don't believe me. Who's going to spell that stuff? I got notes. <laughs> no problem. Just make sure you stay on me about the notes. I'll get them to you. I'll get them to you today. I don't know how to spell them either. Don't come to me, y'all. are saying. But, but my whole point is this. You can take the great I am that Moses was commanded to tell Pharaoh, 
Who sent him? I am sent you. And you know what? The Father is the only being in all the universe that can rightly say that he is the I am. Now, I'll use an example. And I won't pick one of y'all. I'll use myself. Because I know how embarrassed some people get. <laughs> but now if I say, I am the perfect husband. Can I justify that? No. Or do you have to go to my wife and ask her if I'm the perfect husband? Y'all have to go to my wife to justify that I'm the perfect husband. What you're going to find out is that I'm not the perfect husband. Right? <laughs> right. She's going to be like, huh? What? I, I knew we might not do our. Yeah, you know, you, no. we find out that I'm not, right? So, But I cannot justify that. Now, God, when he says, I am something, he's the only being in all the universe that he's the perfect I am. I am God. I am a father. I am the creator. I am the beginning. I am the end. He's the only being that can lay hold of that title. I am. That I am. The only one. So, that's Haya. I am that I am. And if you look at he who is, who was, and is to come, you're going to find the four consonants of the Father's names to build that. Also, in the Father's name, you'll find in these four consonants a pictorial breath. It's just getting too in-depth. It's beautiful, though, isn't it? It is in-depth. But I think on the Father's name. Let me read something to you all from the Bible about thanking on the Father's name. Turn with me to Isaiah 52, 5 to 6. Isaiah, let's start this. Isaiah 52, now therefore, what I have here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them, make them to howl, saith the Lord. Y'all see this word, this name, Lord? All capital. You see that? That's Yahuwah. yod Hey. that's actually yod Hey wah Hey in the Hebrew. That's H3068. H3068. saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore my people shall know what? His name. What is the Father saying here? His people will know I'm his name. I'm not part of no sacred name movement that says, you're not going to get to heaven unless you say it this way. You've got to say this. I'm not none, none of that. Can I say the name Jesus? Yes. Can I say our Father? Let me tell you the, the name that Jesus gave us to call the Father. He has given us the privilege, all of us, to call Him our Father. The Lord's Prayer. This is when you address God, pray this way. Our Father. Is He not our Father also through Christ? That's right. But look at this and the beauty of it. This is the Father's name. He says, My people shall know what? His name. And if I know his name, then I'm also studying his character. Right? Mm How -hmm. I many people study out his name, study his character, observe what he's done for us through Christ? The express image of his Father. That's how we behold. Remember what he tells Philip? If you have seen me, you have seen my Father. Father. So how can we observe the Father? Through the Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. In Psalms 117, 1-2, you'll find the word hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. It's in praise ye the Lord. In our English language, when you look it up in Psalms 117, 1 and 2, the last part of that uh, verse is praise ye the Lord. The Lord. Guess what that is in Hebrew? Hallelujah. 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 That's what it is. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Many times in the Bible we find the Father's name, as I said before. And I have the scriptures. Genesis 22, 14. Exodus 17, 15. Judges 6, 24. Psalms 83, 18. Isaiah 12, 2. Isaiah 26, 4. Exodus 6, 3. 
I want to share something. You know, turn with me to Malachi 3.16. Turn with me to Malachi. How important is it for us to study out the Father's name? Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi 3.16. <laughs> they that feared the Lord. the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. wisdom. Who is the schoolmaster that led us to Christ? The law. The law. Fear of the Lord is moral excellence, moral reverence, morally right. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of wisdom is the schoolmaster that draws you to Christ. God brings us. Let's continue to read. The Lord spake often one to another. Did we speak often one to another? And the Lord hearkened, Ezekiel, and heard it. chapter 46, I think it is. One day a week, the door to the holy, to the sanctuary is open. One day a week, the door is open. What day a week is the door open in the sanctuary? Saturday. The Sabbath. And you shall be my people, and I will be unto you a God. God. Let's go back here and see what Malachi said. the fear of the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. Do y'all want the Lord to hear you? Yes. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Boy, they should have capitalized that his and that name. Isn't that interesting? A book of remembrance is written for those who fear the Lord and thought upon His name. A little while ago we read Isaiah's passage and Isaiah has told us that the Lord said, You will know my name. I'm going to tell you this. If you don't have the Lord's name in your foreheads, you're going to have another one. If You, you know what the forehead represents here? Frontal lobe. The frontal lobe. And in that frontal lobe is where all your reasoning is. That's where all your decision making takes place. Some of the meanest people in the whole world have small frontal lobes. You know why? They lack conscience. But they still have it. Do y'all understand what I'm getting at here? This is where you make a decision. And there's going to be something here. Not visible to the naked eye. So how often do we talk one to another, fear God, talk one another, and think on His name? Daily. daily. It should be daily, shouldn't it? Yeah. And you know, what does God say? There's going to be a book of remembrance written. Now, if you're not written in that book of remembrance, are you going to be a part of heaven? No. How important is it for me to study these things out? Steady to show thyself approved. Approved. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Amen. How many of y'all want your name in that book of remembrance? Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 13 to 16, y'all don't have to turn there. This is where God tells, this is where God tells Moses to tell Pharaoh that I am sent you. I am sent you. And that word in Hebrew is Hayah. Hayah. That is uh, way, yo, yo, way. No, I'm sorry. Hey, yo, yo, hey. Hayah. Hayah. By the way, you can reverse that name and it reads the same way backwards as it does forward. I am that I am. I'm the same from the, from the beginning. I am. He who was, who is, who is to come. You can take that name and reverse it. It's still the same name. So many things. In the Father's name, yod heh wah hey, hey wah hey, His hand behold us. Was our salvation settled before the foundation of this earth? In the council between who? God and the Son. God and the Son. And guess where we find it? The everlasting covenants in the Father's name. And behold. Now, behold, they already had it planned for us. And the Father says, this is the name. You know, when he, uh, when he sent Moses, he said, by my name, in one passage, they did not know me by this name. Your fathers did not know me by this name. Is there always a contrast? Does Satan have a counterfeit to everything? 
Does he have his own name? He's a crafty demon. He's a crafty being. He's been on this earth about 6,000 years. But I'm going to tell you this. He was in the throne room of God. He was a covering cherub. He stood right directly across from Michael. Lucifer stood across from Michael, covering cherub. I'm going to tell you what I think. I think Jesus was begotten, brought forth from the Father, and I think Lucifer was the first of creation. He was the oldest created son. That's why he was so jealous when Christ was exalted. Oh, shouldn't I have that position, Father? Jesus created Lucifer. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So how old is this demon? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know how old this demon is, but I can tell you this, he's way older than this earth. More wiser. And way more wiser. And he's got a whole army here with him. He's got an entire army here with him. He's a very crafty being. And if you don't have the Father's name here, he may deceive some into receiving a different name. Not just by what they believe, but he's also devised it that they can receive the mark by what they do by their works. Well, he's not partial. He'll take either way. Either by your works or by your belief. But if you believe it, then you must know who you worship. But you may not know that you give an honor to someone else if you don't know the Bible. Right? My people perish all day long from lack of knowledge. Knowledge. Do we just want to be followers of man or do we want to be followers of Christ? Christ. And who is the Word? Jesus Christ. In John, Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. We don't have to turn there. I'm going to, I'm going to be wrapping this up here now. We're going to come to a close. But I want to present to you a contrast between two beings here now. And then we're going to pick this up again next week and go further with it. Oh, by the way, don't miss next week. Because it gets real good. Real good. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace. What's going to be unto you? Grace and peace. Grace and peace from him which is which was and which is to come. Hayah, Owe, Yiye. And from the seven spirits which are in peace Christ. unto you from him that is the great I am and the seven spirits that are before the throne of God. Those seven spirits even wish us grace and peace, don't they? So we have the great I am, he who was, who is, who is to come. I've not heard an angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and was, and shalt be, because thou hast judged thee who was, who is, who is to come. Are we going to be in heaven with the Father and the Son? Yeah, the great I am and his Son. I am Alpha and Omega. This is Revelation 1.8. The beginning and the end between that alphabet of the Hebrew language. Alpha, first letter. Omega, the last letter. Is, and everything was and is to come. The great I am. Here's the contrast. Revelation 17. Contrast. Let's look at the beast now. That thou sawest, was, and is not, and, sh and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life. Y'all right yeah. see the contrast? They that dwell on the earth shall wonder after this beast, and their names are not written in the book of life. It says right here, there's the contrast. 
from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and is. So if we have a beast that, that is, that was, and that is not. Is that a contrast to God? Yeah. That's a direct contrast to God, isn't it? The great I am and the great no I am. The great I am and his adversary. He who is, who was, who is not rather, who was, who is not, is to come. God is who was, who is, and who is to come. The contrast. Those who have the Father's name, the names are written in the Book of Remembrance. Those who follow after this beast, their names are not written in the Book of Remembrance. Who is this beast? Who is this beast? They must have a different name in their four years. We're going to study this. We're going to study it out next week. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Matt? <laughs> we'll, we'll study this more next week. I'm going to end it with this. The Father's name is in His Son. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20 through 30. God is the And it's the only time that God says that his name is in something. He says, don't provoke him, my name is in him. Let's go on further. This is he, Moses, that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spake unto him in Mount Sinai, who spoke, and with our fathers, who received the living oracles to give unto us, Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This angel was the angel of God's presence. That's what it means. The angel of God's presence. There's only one perfect example of the Father. That's Isaiah 6, 3, 9. You can look it up. The angel in whom was the name of the great Jehovah. Exodus 23, 20 through 23. The expression can refer to no other than the Son of God. Do we know his name? Do we know his son's name? I'm going to go deeper into this next week. And I'm also not just going to go deeper into this, but I'm also going to point out the name of the beast. I'm going to give you the name yeah. of the beast that's in the harlot's forehead. I'm going to give y'all from the harlot herself the name in the forehead that they've embraced that puts them out of the book of remembrance. What they believe and what they do is going to keep them out of heaven. How many of y'all want to be in heaven? Amen. Amen. We all want to be there, right? Yes. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. I can't wait. Especially with that glorified body. What a perfect, beautiful time that's going to be. What's that song go? When I look upon my Lord's face. When he takes me by the hand. What's that song? There is coming a day When no heartache shall come Y'all know the song, right? Sometimes. What a day that will be. What a day, yeah, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. Amen. Let's close the prayer today. I opened in prayer. I didn't even open in prayer today. Did I? Well, we got carried away. But we're going to have another good sermon next week. And it's going to be a follow up of this. Let's go to prayer. Please. Holy Father. Thank you for all the blessings that you poured out upon us. Lord, we praise thee and thank thee. And we ask that you let your Holy Spirit be upon us. 
Bring us of what is our Lord's. Seal us, Lord. And if we're not sealed at this time, commend our souls into your hand for their safekeeping. And continue to lead us until we are firmly settled and grounded in truth. To the point that we cannot be shaken or moved. Holy Father, you know all things. You know where each and every one of us are in our world. All those here and all those viewing on the internet. Lord, I ask that you bring us closer to you. Into a deeper relationship. Continue to grow us in Christ, your beautiful Son. Let us be found in Him. We love you with all of our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. Just as your first commandment is, the greatest, according to our Lord and Savior in the book of Matthew. And also in the Old Testament of Deuteronomy chapter 6. We embrace your promises and your conditions. Help us to learn Protect our homes. Let your holy angels surround us in this great battle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.